Thanks. Loud and clear, Allah Ali. All right, thank you very much, Adams. Uh, all right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Um, I hope you're all doing great. Um, give me a second, let me check one or two on my end. Okay, so if you are joining us for the first time on a masterclass at Tenalytics, please um, type in a one on your chat. Or you can just also tell me where you're joining us from. Okay, just type in a one if you're joining for the first time and tell me where you're joining from. Yeah, I need some, some responses. I need to be sure it's not only Adam that is on this call. Oh, Mr. Lee is from Abuja. Gabriel from Just. Thank you. Yeah, please. Okay. A Zoom user is from Lagos. Thank you. Because I need more responses. So we are still expecting from Port Harcourt, Mr. Andrew, thank you. Still expecting a whole lot more people. Um, okay, let me just share. Goa from Joss. Gali from Kano. Nice. Welcome to this session. So peaceful scene, <laughs> peaceful scene, that's impressive. From Lagos, welcome. Awesome. All right, so um, we're going to be having an interesting one tonight. Um, promise to keep it short. So you can have some time to do other things if you have to. So, um, but within the hour, we're going to show you, give you an awesome experience about what we do at Analytics, and of course, what you can learn being a cybersecurity analyst. Um, please confirm if you can see my screen. If you can see my screen, type a one, please. Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so basically tonight, um, I'm here with my my boss, my colleague, um, Adi Dolako. Um, I'll just do the brief introduction about Tenalytics. Um, then again, give you an insight into what this session is going to look like. Then I'm going to bring Adi Dolako on the call for him to um, take us, give us a deep dive into what um, you'll be doing as a cyber security analyst, uh, as, as an expert, and then, um, you would be able to get some detailed mentorship through him. And um, hopefully, we see you in class by the next court. So um, basically, what we are talking tonight is um, trying to tell you why cyber, cyber threats are on the rise and how you can help companies fight back. Um, just from this topic, you understand that there are malicious attacks that are going on um, with companies almost every time. And they are always on the rise, so always looking for um, experts, cybersecurity experts who can help them tackle these threats. But before we go deep into this, I would like to first introduce um, Tenalytics as a company to you. So Tenalytics is an edtech um, company. We are helping Africans um, and people of the Black community to learn premium tech skills by lowering the entry barrier into tech. So we've carefully selected um, courses that we believe are easy for you to transition into tech. So regardless of your background, regardless of, regardless of where you're coming from, we've been we'll be able to carefully select skills, I mean, sorry, career paths in tech that can be the easy ride for you to, to get into tech and not just easy ride, um, but because they're also in high demand. So, we, we offer training services in, in courses, in programs like data analytics, business analysis, data engineering, data science, financial analytics, Scrum Master, HR analytics, and of course, cybersecurity, which is which will be our bone of contention um, this night. Our facilitators have, have very vast experience and worked with the reputable organizations like Apple, Microsoft, McKinsey, um, Amazon, PwC, Deloitte, and the likes. Um, Adi Dolako, who is going to be taking most of this session also 
you'll be you'll be wowed by his his wealth of experience in the area of cybersecurity. So without much ado, I'll go straight to um, introducing the founder of Tenalytics. Um, the founder of Tenalytics are days are Suleiman. Is a data is a data analyst, also a data analytic analytics expert. Um, he has over a decade experience in data analytics. Um, he's trained over eight thousand five hundred students in the past years, and he's very passionate about what he does. He's, he's he started. Um, he got his first degree in industrial chemistry, but at some point he he knew what could come up in tech and decided to transition. He spent a whole lot of time getting his path right to data analysis and he founded analytics such that you can be able to provide structured mentorship and training for people who might be coming from whichever background also but then looking to transition into um, tech making that um, career path or making that transition in uh, much easier for other people he's joined by well, then he was joined by um a femina april who is a co-founder. He is also, um, he, he graduated with economics, but then he had to transition into tech also. Also took him some time to do all of this, but then he has worked with, as a data science contractor in the UK, US, a business data support lead at the, at the UK post office, then the global business analyst at Teleflex Ireland. So he's worked across many sectors and industries also. Um, both of them decided to join us and then help a lot of people as many as, as are interested and are willing, able to make the commitment to transition into tech. They structured their pro the, these programs, um, they selected, carefully selected programs such that um, instead of you spending years moving around um, your path in tech, you can easily do that um, within a four month structured program and mentorship with your own commitment, of course, and then you can get into tech as quickly as possible. I'll be showing you a host of testimonials that we've had from our, our students. Trust me, last year alone, we helped over 850 students transition from their, um, from our classrooms into their first tech jobs. 850, let's, let me resound that again. 850 students went from classroom to their first um, tech careers. And I'm going to be sharing the host of um, their testimonials here tonight. Of course, my name is Olawale Adeshina. I'm the Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer at Analytics. Um, I have a background in digital marketing, um, but then I transitioned also into data analytics last year. But then I can't just throw away my background in marketing as data analytics is related to almost every field. So I am a marketing data analyst. I, I make sense out of uh, marketing data, help to make uh, more decision in business. I've worked as a con co consultant across France, Turkey, USA, um, Germany, Ghana, and Kenya. All of these jobs are freelance jobs, short gigs that I've done um, from um, places like Fiverr and Upwork. Then, of course, joining me and who will be driving most of this conversation here is Ade Dolapo um, Akinde. He's going to be doing more introductions about himself later, but then I'll just do a bit about him. He's a head of cybersecurity. Um, governance program management and compliance with Unity Bank. Yeah. So um, he's going to be saying a lot more about himself. He has his master's in cybersecurity at the University of Liverpool. I'm going to leave him to do more of his own introduction later on in this um, in this program. But quickly, let me just delve into it so that we can um, have a go at, at this. So what are we going to be doing here tonight? First, um, I'm going to be showing you why you should choose a career in tech, where the opportunities are in tech. Then, of course, Ade Dolako is going to tell you why cyber threats are on the rise and how you can help companies fight back. Then again, I'm going to tell you about our upcoming programs um, for the March cohort. Then I'm going to share a lot of success stories. I told you about 850 students went from their, their from our training to their first tech job. Some of them are where, where not most of them actually. We're, we're doing jobs, I mean, sorry, we're coming from jobs that were not related to tech, but then they were able to transition. So I'm going to share their success stories. And of course, for those who are able to make it to this call tonight, you wouldn't just take your time for, for nothing. You have um, a special discount that we're going to be offering you that you can use right on this call to make sure you're getting a reduced cost. And of course, 
we also give you opportunity to make um, payments in two, in two installments. So please stay on on this call for till the end. And I'm going to share that discount with you and you can begin your, your journey into tech. So um, first, let me start with why, sh why, why choose a career in tech? Yeah. I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why you should choose, choose a, a career in tech. First, tech is in, increasingly a, a, attractive career path for graduates and career switchers alike. Um, with the rise of technology, internet, and the likes, now we are, some, some countries are even moving past for 5G, yeah? So tech is just booming, is growing from, from day to day. Now we are in the, we are in the, we are in the knowledge age, yeah? Um, where some, some parts of Africa are still struggling with the industrial age, the West have moved on to the um, information age. That is when we started having the internet. Now they're moving on to the um, knowledge age, where we are talking about AI and the likes. So things are moving so fast, and then more opportunities are coming up. Um, more, more demand is, is, there is more demand for tech careers, but then not just all tech careers. Some are dwindling away, while some are going to be very useful moving forward. One of them is cybersecurity, and I'm going to show you how and why. But first, talking about why you should choose a career in tech again, um, there is this great work-life um, balance and flexibility that comes with, with tech. Most of the people that do tech jobs are working remotely. Yeah, they offer, they, are, they have the opportunity and the flexibility to do their job uh, where, they, where it fits. Most people that I know in tech, they are, they are travelers, basically, because they can always move their laptop and their, and their computers and then they can work from anywhere across the globe. Um, to be honest, personally, I've not been, I've not stepped into an office since 2020, since COVID. I've always worked online, worked from anywhere I want to. So if I have my laptop with me and I have stable internet, I'm good to go. So that, those are the kind of opportunities that come with working um, in the tech industry. The other thing is there are growing job opportunities. Yeah, IT job opportunities, IT jobs account for about 25.55% of the global technology industry hiring as of November 2022. And this is, has increased drastically and will continue to increase. In fact, talking about cybersecurity, they said the amount of data that will be churned out in the next four years is going to quadruple. Yeah? Therefore, many more malicious attacks are going to happen. Therefore, we're going to be needing a lot more, a lot more cybersecurity experts. So meaning there are growing job opportunities as, as the world begins, continues to advance, growing opportunities are coming up and then um, there are opportunities there. Most of them I'll talk about later in a later slide where the World Economic Forum mentioned a few careers that we should be looking at in the next coming year. Um, also, you don't, need a, you don't always need a tech related degree. I, I was lucky to have a computer science degree before joining, before venturing into tech. Um, as a matter of fact, some of my mates in school back then didn't even go into tech. Some went into bank and all of that. So basically, your 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 car, sorry your degree from the university, whether you have one or not, does not have anything to do with you being in the tech role. Some of our students, I've seen one of our students was a lawyer. Yeah, like I mentioned, our, our founder is an industrial. He finished as an industrial chemist. Um, um, the co-founder was finished as an economist before venturing in to become a data science and data analyst. Let me give you a short story. I have a friend right now, he's a senior backend developer with um, Andela. This guy does not have any degree at all, at all. But he's a senior backend developer, works with global brands across the world. As a matter of fact, he's trying to get his, his degree on Coursera just for the sake of that certificate. And if you're familiar with Coursera, most of the universities that are on Coursera, they can let you, you can actually do a degree for the next 10 years. So far, you can, you can always pause, come back, but though it's expensive, but you can always pause, come back. So he's just doing it just to get it. Yeah, with the, with the university in UK that is in, on Coursera. But basically, he's making his money doing well without, without any degree at all. All he has is the skill. And I'm going to show you why you need that skill and why your, your degree is just probably just, it's not a blocker at all. It's not stopping you from getting into tech. Then the next thing is the fantastic salary and benefits. Yeah, tech um, professionals are, are one of the very few that collect money that get paid in foreign currencies. Back then, it was those that work in the oil um, industry 
that we know, uh, okay, are you working with Chevron, blah, blah, blah. That's, those are people that will get paid in dollars. But then people in the tech industry, so far you can get good gigs. I've had gigs on Upwork that paid in dollars. Every um, um, gigs on Fiverr that paid in, in dollars. So you have the opportunity to get paid good money. And also, if you're in the diaspora, for instance, or you, are, you plan to move to the diaspora, getting some of these tech skills is going to position you such that you're able to get fantastic, fantastic salary. And with the skills you have and your negotiating skills, how to defend yourself in interviews and all of that, which you is, is, a, is, a, is a total package that analytics offers. You can be able to actually sell yourself well enough to determine how much you'll be paid. Yeah, if you hear about um, you hear about tech companies getting funded in with good money, this money gets to people that actually do the real work. Yeah, so you can you can be a cybersecurity with with a company that just got funded. You could get equity. Yeah, you could get good salary from them if you're able to sell yourself and and know your onions. The next thing I'd like to talk about here is that you be at the art of innovation and change. Yeah, the last project I worked on, I always talk about it, it's something I'm so 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 very proud of. Um, I worked with a, a tech company in the UK, um, but they have their they, they are launching an app in Ghana. Yeah, that app is meant to be able to let people um, people book an appointment with a doctor, and not just for every other conditions, but sexual health conditions and mental health conditions. These are conditions that people are always, they feel stigmatized talking about, yeah? But then they've created that app such that you can easily use that app to talk about your mental health with a the doctor. They can, they can give you counseling, they can give you therapy online, they can um, send you your drugs to your house. Sexual health, you don't want to go to, um, as, a, as a guy, you don't want to go to a, a, an hospital, a physical hospital, and then you see a woman to talk about your sexuality, you might, you might feel embarrassed. Yeah, so you can do that on the app, you get your medicine. So you are the forefront of innovation, basically, if you are working in the tech industry. You are doing, you are changing the world, basically. So it's just an awesome place to be at. Um, so talking about cybersecurity now, I would like to show you, um, I would like to paint a scenario for you, what um, cybersecurity is about, and then um, just show you how, how, what, um, how, how cybersecurity came into being, why it is needed, and how your role would be, how important your role is or would be if you totally become, if you eventually become a cybersecurity expert. I want to paint a scenario for you. Um, there is this guy called Aldo. Yeah, I'm sorry if anyone here yeah, bears that name, but then I'll just use that for this. But before I go on, I, I need to be sure I'm carrying everybody along, so I'm not just um, talking at myself. So if if you're if you're if you're with me, yeah, let me use that that one. If you're with me and you're feeling what I'm saying here so far, just type yes in the chat, please. If you're with me, just say yes, yes, yes. I want to see the yeses. Awesome, awesome. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah, now I'm I'm gingered. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, so there's this guy called Aldo, yeah? Aldo shops online, yeah? Like everybody, every, every other person. We shop online. Then he has his credentials saved on the website to enable hassle free experience. For instance, each time I go, go back to shop on Jimmy, I don't, I don't ever put my card details. It's already saved on their platform. They just put my money, then get me my goods immediately. So Aldo does this with his um, site, um, shoppingcarts.com. Then one day he received an email that is eligible for a discount on, on the website. Of course, he's going to be excited. Okay, I've been spending so much on this site. Now they say I have a discount to receive. So immediately he received the coupon code and he asked, he immediately in order for him to receive the coupon code for the discount, he was asked to impute his credentials. So he was like, okay, let me just do this. He, doesn't, he didn't even check to understand if this is a bit fishy or not. It was the excitement, now sure you get. He went ahead to put on his details. But before he knew it, he put on his, he put on his details, meaning his car details and all of that. Before he knew it, his money was, was moved out of his account. So the thing is, he was shocked. I got this mail from, from my shopping cart.com where I always shop. So why would money be moved out from my account? But actually, the email he got was fake. Yeah, the email he received was fake. And what has experienced in that scenario now is a cyber attack. And again, this type of attacks 
um, they are carried out by so-called hackers. So the word hacker, you might be using used in a, in a good term sometimes. They are malicious hackers, then they are ethical hackers. Um, I think Dolako is going to delve more into that and, and shed more light on that. But basically, in this case now, um, the case for Mr. For Mr. Aldo here yeah, is OT Law. They've, they've swiped this money out of his account. So the email he got was what they used, you understand, to get the money out of his account. Um, so in this case now, let me move on to the next slide. So my question is, do you think Aldo could have prevented the attack? Of course, yes, with the help of cybersecurity. So now this is where you come as a cybersecurity expert, yeah? Because the whole idea of cybersecurity, it involves the technique that helps to secure various digital component, network, data, computer system from unauthorized access. If shoppingcart.com had a good cybersecurity expert like one of you on this call, on their team, then someone wouldn't attack them and from there attack their customers. Yeah. So you see why um, a company is actually are looking for cybersecurity experts. And we'd always need cybersecurity experts. Some of us have received malicious call. Hey, guy, Alpha, send a code from your phone. You know, things like that. It's something that is always happening. I've, I've, I've received a call from someone before that told me to, he called out mine just to convince me, called out my BVN, called, called out my account number just because he wants me to send a code from my phone to him. Yeah, to show me that he, that means he has my details. He has acted somewhere, maybe from a bank. I I I have my money in, and he's trying to get my money out. So to prevent all of that, we need cybersecurity expert. So there are various types of at attack that Aldo could have been exposed to. Sorry, various attack that could, there are there are malware attacks. Those one can be on his on his system itself. There are phishing attack, fraudulent emails like the one he received, telling him he has a coupon code. There is man in the middle attack where people take over IP addresses. This happened when you have an unsecure Wi-Fi. Wi a few days ago, I noticed that I'm not the only one using my Wi-Fi. Yeah, apparently some people have, some people, because they, they know I'm always at home and my Wi-Fi is always on. Some people are, are helping me to tap it. I had to reset my password. And then also this, there is a password attack where people are able to hack into your password then access all of your um, account details. I'm, I'm sorry, your email and, and the likes. So there are a few things that Aldo could have done as, as a person and possibly as, as a company, meaning install firewall to safeguard networks by filtering what goes in and come out. And there is the Onipod dummy computer system to attract attackers. This, this one is when you have two systems. One is like a dummy, one is a real one. So you open the dummy for, for the attackers to, to face, face that one while you continue to do your work on the on the real one. Then of course, as a personal um, practice, you should use alphanumeric password. If I ask some people their password and they will tell me it's one, two, three, four, five, or some, some people will say it's A, B, C, D, E. But then you can be creative with your password, use a, 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 a combination of numbers, um, 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 alphabets and, and, and symbols and the like. Then of course, there, there are antivirus softwares that you can use. And again, avoid emails from unknown senders. Some, some email platforms are smart enough now, like if you, if you send an email to me on Gmail, if I don't know you, it's going to market like, you know this guy, should we let him in, you know? It's like that, even on phones now, if, if people call my own phone anyways, if people call me and I don't have their number saved, they are going to tell me, do I really want to pick this call? If I don't want to, I should just end the call. Yeah, so those are, those are cybersecurity um, protocols that are put in place to ensure um, that people don't get attacked maliciously. So um, organization also experience cyber attacks, like I mentioned, and I did a lot of going to delve more into that. I don't want to say big grammar that is, that is bigger than, than my mark. I will let I did a lot of do justice today, but then just a quick overview. There is an advanced persistent threat where hackers gain access to a network through a prolonged time. Like if they know that you have the money, you have the money in your network, they can stay on your mother for the next one year, stay on it until they get their access into it. Then there is a distributed denial of services where there are multiple attacks, like they just keep attacking multiple from multiple ends. So while you're trying to block this one, another one is coming from the other end. Then there's always the SQL in inject attack where they manipulate your standard query and database to from your 
from your directory from your website. So the big challenge for organization is, is why cybersecurity experts are needed. The, this is a big challenge, sorry, for organization. This is why cybersecurity experts are needed to identify these threats and neutralize them. Yeah. They don't want their person, their customers data to, to be out there for people to, to cheat on them or to um, rather um, scam them. They don't want companies, to, they don't want to lose their data also. They don't want to lose money. So they need cybersecurity experts to help them neutralize these threats. Um, sorry, one second. Okay, so there are multiple roles that exist in the cybersecurity field. They are the ethical attacks, hackers rather. I talked about malicious hackers the other time. The ma malicious hackers are the ones you know as the, the Yahoo Yahoo ones. Yeah, the ones that act maliciously. Yeah, but the ethical hackers, basically those ones would actually do what the Yahoo Yahoo are doing, but then you are aware that they are there. But their job is to identify where the Yahoo Yahoo can come in and try and block those loopholes before the Yahoo Yahoo will come in. Then there are the security ar architects, information security analysts, cyber security engineer, a whole lot of them, um, Adi Dolako will do justice to that. So at this point, I'm going to hand over the mic to Adi Dolako and let him, let's, let's fasten your seatbelt and let him take us on the right. All right, thank you so much. Adi Dolako, over to you. All right. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So wherever you are connecting from, um, you are welcome to uh, Tenalytics Masterclass. And uh, tonight we'll be talking about uh, a very interesting topic of which uh, my colleague has already uh, laid the foundation. So let me ask this question. Uh, are you ready to uh, protect uh, organizations from cyber attacks? If your response is yes, please drop a two in the chat. Drop a two in the chat if you are ready uh, to protect these organizations from cyber attacks. Drop a two in the chat, all right? Cyber security is a warfare and uh, is a battlefield. So are you ready to uh, assist companies in fighting back cyber-related attacks? Drop a two in the chat. All right, thank you so much, Olawale, for that um, foundation. It's very helpful. And uh, with what uh, I'm going to say tonight, it's going to solidify uh, what you have, uh, you have rightly put out there. So uh, permit me to share my, uh, I will be fast about, uh, I won't take so much of your time because I understand that, uh, uh, sorry. All right. All right. All right, so good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, wherever you are connecting from. Uh, my name is Ade Dolapo, and I'll be taking us through an interesting topic, uh, why cyber threats are on the rise and how you can help companies uh, fight back. Because like I said, it is a warfare, all right? It's a cyber warfare out there and, uh, you know, uh, we'll be looking at what those things are and how you can help. And of course, it's not free. It is uh, something that uh, will uh, not just uh, improve your career, your career progression, but it will also put uh, money in your pocket. And of course, flexibility. So my name is Adedola Kwakide. I am um, I'm a cyber security, uh, certified lead cyber security manager with PECB. All right, I have a some certification, some of which are uh, I'm a CESAR, I'm a CISIM, I'm a CFE, PMP, I'm an FCA, and I have a master's in uh, cyber security from University of Liverpool. So these are just some of uh, my certifications. So I'll be talking to us about myself, uh, the next slide, the evolution of cyber threats, what is a cyber threat, you know, and uh, 
So what is a cyber threat? And what is cyber security? What is a uh, the cyber? Uh, we looked at uh, cyber statistics globally, the evolution of uh, threat landscape, the cyber security outlook for the year 2024, the security implications and the risks, and of course the top 2024 cyber security trends and predictions, the way forward, how you can help, and of course a roadmap that will help you uh, in you know providing that needed uh, support. All right. Uh, for these companies in fighting but any models available in our summer security program all right so about myself uh i graduated with a second class upper division in accounting uh from lagos state university in 2008 uh, and completed my nyc program in 2009 november so you heard about the profiles of the founders of Tenalytics. they did not study computer science or computer engineering but here we are uh doing massive uh, things in technology and security. So I began my career at Aopani and Co, Tunde Adoramaji and Co, a firm of chartered accountants as a trainee and audit senior respectively. In 2011, I transitioned into IT audit when I joined Zenith Bank PLC as an experienced hire. Then I gained experiences in some aspects of technology, starting with identity and access management, data analytics, e-channels audit. Then I moved into a cyber security role proper in First Bank Nigeria as a senior banking officer in 2011. I was promoted to an assistant manager. Then I worked as cyber security and compliance advisory manager at Digital Encode uh, in 2022 before I, uh, you know, I became uh, the head of security security governance program management and compliance cyber security in unity bank all right so i act currently as the deputy CISO. i i was awarded top 25 cyber security star of the year in the year 2023 according to information and technology conflicts that was held in uh, new delhi india i'm a fellow of the institute of child accountants of nigeria I'm a fellow of the institute of, uh, institute of management consultants Nigeria IMC, amongst other international certifications. I have a double master's, um, one in cyber security and the other in management. All right, thank you. So uh, this is, um, if you go to Digital, digital Confex website, you will see me, um, you know, uh, displayed on the website as one of the recipients of that uh, award, um, you know, with uh, some other guys in the cyber security space. Uh, you can see here, uh, Alexandra Overth is a CISO and DPO, Data Protection Officer of Cryptic AG. We also have uh, Jenny uh, Sujen Gan from Kapaski. All right. She is the head of government affairs, public and um, public policy in uh, Asia, Pacific, Japan, Middle East, Turkey, and Africa. All right. And we have a whole lot of other guys uh, like uh, Bairyanath Kumar, uh, who is a CISO and Data Protection Officer at JK Lashmi Cement. All right, so a whole lot of people out there. Uh, it was a very tough one, but 25 of us that were selected, you know, we had to go through a selection process. All right, so let's talk about the evolution of cyber uh, threats. So uh, I'm just trying to lay a, a background for us to know that this, this thing called cyber security, cyber security as it actually evolved from somewhere. It's not, it didn't just fall from the sky, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So um, it started sometime in, in uh, 1971, all right? That was the first computer virus uh, that we had. It, it, it was called Creeper, all right? You know what Creeper means? For something to creep, you know? Uh, so that was actually where it, uh, it started, it started from, all right? um so um and after that uh, sorry um sorry just give me a moment okay so um and after that uh there was reaper in the following year that was in 1972 and the reaper was the virus the antivirus that was used to delete creeper virus from computers you can see as far back as 1971 1972 we already had a threat a threat so a virus is a threat a malware is a threat 
whatever uh, that seems to cause harm to your computer system, not just computer system, information assets, all right, uh, is a threat. Is a threat to what we call vulnerability. And what is a vulnerability? A vulnerability is a weakness, is a, is a loophole in a system, in a process, in a technology. So what cyber attackers do is to look for those vulnerabilities and what exploit them all right so you, you you not all vulnerabilities can be exploited but for the fact that that vulnerability is lying down there or just you know somewhere it can be exploited by by someone by what we call a threat actor now that threat actor exploit the vulnerability and and that becomes a threat all right so that is how it is so so the first ever attack occurred on November 2nd, 1988, through a worm called Morris. So you can see that it's been, uh, it's been, it's been, um, uh, it's been on, you know, since 1988. That was the first, uh, that was the first cyber, uh, what we call cyber um, 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 uh, attack, all right, cyber attack in 1988. Because of our time, I'll just quickly rush through my slides. Okay, there's some information I would like not to pass, uh, but because of time, let me just quickly rush. All right, so what is a cyber threat? All right, we said that the cyber threat is a potential attack that aims to breach uh, uh, a server, uh, 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 breach cyber security, all right, through cyber attacks. And of course, it causes harm, harm to uh, your uh, your your systems harm to the person it's the persons your the employees of that organization as long as there's a vulnerability it can be exploited and it can cause a harm all right let's move on now let's look at the, this global statistics here it says that worldwide cyber crime costs are estimated to hit 10.5 trillion dollars annually by 2025 the cost, what that means, what that means is that the cost of um, the amount expended in in um, in, uh, in, in that is invested in cyber security, the tooling, uh, whatever, even the cost of hiring uh, staff. All right, it 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 it, it everything makes up to what ten point five trillion, and of course, even the. Um, the, expo the exposure, all right, the amount that is that eventually leaves a system as a result of a cyber attack, all right, everything amounts to 10.5 trillion. Then global spending on cyber security product, look at that, uh, that I just mentioned. So this 1.75 trillion is part of what we have there. Global spending on cyber security products and services is predicted to reach 1.75 trillion cumulatively for the first uh, for the five-year period from 2021 to 2025. Now, 70% of cybersecurity professionals reported that their organizations are understaffed, which has hampered multiple functional and operational elements of cybersecurity. This is according to ISC Squared. ISC Squared is a is 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 uh, one of the in fact is the is the pioneer uh, professional association uh, in cybersecurity. All right. Now, 54% of companies say that the IT departments are not sophisticated enough to handle advanced cyber attacks. Companies with about between the range of 500 to 1,499 employees ignore or don't investigate 27% of all alerts. So what are these alerts? Alerts are events, events that, uh, you know, that that uh that uh that have been displayed that play out as a result of you know some security policies that we have defined those are events and we are told that between 500 and 1500 employees ignore or don't investigate 27 percent of those alerts and it's in in, in, in the 27 percent of those alerts you can be sure that some certain like about uh, two to five percent of those alerts they might be they might actually be real events that can lead to an incident, all right? So how do we now ensure that those 5% that 
do not skip us. It's by doing what? It's by uh, getting the right education, which uh, Analytics is going to offer you in fine tuning all of these uh, uh, policies. Then financial services have 449,855 exposed sensitive files, 36,004 of which are open to everyone in the organization. This is the highest when comparing industries. Then the average ransomware payout has increased dramatically from $812,380 in 2022 to $1,542,333 in 2023. Now let's look at the uh, evolving threat landscape. So we talked about uh, advanced threats. These are AI-powered adversaries. AI-powered adversaries. The world has, has really, really evolved. Technology has evolved. All right? Uh -huh. And as long as technology keeps evolving, our threat landscape too will keep evolving. All right? Uh -huh. what, was not what was not vulnerable before today might become a vulnerability. All right? So AI-powered adversaries complex supply chain uh, vulnerabilities and sophisticated ransomware tactics demand proactive defense mechanism in fact uh, i think in in the in the ongoing court in fact i mentioned this in a class all right uh, between uh, microsoft and solar winds it was a result of a supply chain attack all right because uh, the attackers knew that so many organizations use solar winds product so they use that as, as an avenue to target uh, uh, systems. And in fact, it was recorded that that is the highest, in terms of data breach, that is the, 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 the incident or the breach that has the highest number of records in terms of the number of organizations affected. Then expanding attack surface, expanding attack surface. Uh, today, we see a whole, all just as a result of evolution of technology, it has led to what an, ex, an, an expanded attack surface. Today, we talk about, uh, uh, you know, you can check your office mails on your mobile phones, right? You can do a whole lot, a whole lot on the same phone that you, that you, that you, that you, that you use in receiving um, office mails. You do social media on it. Some of us, we connect to public Wi-Fi, all right? Uh -huh. So in, the, in this time and age, what we talk about Internet of Things, attack surfaces have really, really increased. So, for example, increased cloud adoption, right? IoT, that's Internet of Things proliferation, and remote work trends. Today, uh, in fact, Adewale talked about remote work. So how do we know what a staff does uh, at, at, at those remote locations? So that's the reason why uh, endpoints our endpoints need to be properly protected. And what are these endpoints? Your laptops, your workstations, your servers, your mobile, mobile devices, you, you know, all of these are endpoints. And your terminals too, whether ATMs or POSs, they have to be what are uh, protected. So we have a class that we're talking about endpoint security. All right, so now let's go, look, move to the next one, geopolitical tensions the rise of state-sponsored cyber attacks and misinformation campaigns necessitate resilience and international cooperation. I would have loved to show you a real-time a real -time, uh, 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 chart of how attacks are going on between countries. Between countries. So it is true, all right? State, there are state-sponsored cyber attacks, all right, uh, between countries. All right, and again, it is not all cyber attacks that focus on money. No, some some some, some cyber attacks they are focusing on getting information secrets. All right, you can imagine that's why uh, United States will will always pay attention to see uh, to to security. All right, to security, and that's why some some countries are not allowed. Uh, their products are not allowed because they consider those products or those countries as threats, all right, to national security. All right, so uh, so what is the outlook uh, for year 2024, all right, in retrospect to cybersecurity? Number one, we have talk about 
integration between cloud and on-premise defense, integration between cloud and on-premise defense, economic downturn and heightened insider threats. In fact, be before now, we used to, of course, there, are, there have been insider threats, but now there will be an increase in the way and manner that uh, even uh, insiders will be conniving with uh, outsiders in perpetrating uh, cyber attacks. Escalation of ransomware attacks. Ransomware attacks, all right? And what, what is a ransomware? Ransomware is when uh, an, a, an organizational data is encrypted by an attacker. And in, the, in, in doing that, requesting uh, the organization to pay a sum, a sum of money called uh, a ransom, all right, before that data can be decrypted. But again, if after paying the ransom to the attacker, how sure are you that um, uh, 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 that, that data will be, will be decrypted? But when you come to uh, uh, the, the court, the next court, you'll be taught how to put proper defense, defense, defense mechanisms in place by way of putting access controls, whether uh, physical controls or logical controls. We'll be teaching you all of these things and how you can uh, uh, further uh, protect yourself and your organization. I already talked about 5G. Yes. So 5G network exploitation, all right, uh, is also something that we should look out for in the year 2024. Adoption of zero trust security models, cyber security res representation at board level. All right. So we are, we are already beginning to see that. So what does that tell us? Opportunities for you when you transition into cyber security. You won't just be, uh, you won't just end up as a cyber security uh, 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 analyst. You can also get to the board where you will be uh, ha having uh, discussions when it comes to cyber security with the MD, CEO, the CFO, the CRO, the uh, CIO, you know, the CCO. You can have that discussion even with uh, the chairman and the board of directors. So, of course, partnership against cyber crime is also you know i also discussed that and what are the, who are these partners who are these partners they are yeah they, they constitute yourself myself and there are some other organizations too like uh, the the likes of fsi sac so we need to team up we need to partner together and fight this uh many is called uh, cyber crime then of course we also have cyber security inexperience the japa syndrome has also uh, created a gap, all right? Uh, people living from one country to another country. Why, why some organizations, yes, allow, yes, you to work remotely, but there are still some organizations, you know. But again, even if you try, even if you uh, move to another country, you know, there are other opportunities that you'll be looking out for. So that is actually the issue. The issue is not the remote work. The issue is that people are moving on to greener pastures, all right? But so that has created opportunity uh, for you to transition into so there are jobs for you then uh what are the security implications and the risks we already talked about emerging technologies digital wallets uh of course you know what a wallet is the smart contract for those of us who know uh, uh, uh blockchain all right so smart contract contactless payment like where, where you where you can tap and make your payment all right without you you know uh so i only gave scenario Okay, a, a case study of someone or a who, 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 who registered uh, on e-commerce website and of course, uh, you know, and uh, of course stored, saved his credentials on that website. And of course, for every time you want to make a payment, you don't need to uh, authenticate yourself. That is also a security. It poses a security risk for recurring payments. The artificial intelligence, internet of things, 5g technology quantum computing quantum computing is is the next if i is the next big thing that we are seeing today all right that allows uh it it uses it uses quantum me me mechanics all right to solve complex problems what your normal computers cannot do a quantum computer can actually uh do it all right so that is a that emerging technology is a threat and what is that threat? Cryptographic breakthrough. It then means that the likes of RSA, 
the likes of AES, all these cryptographic uh, uh, algorithms can be deciphered. They can be broken. It's just a matter of time. So it, that is also uh, something that we should look out for. Then what are other server, uh, the server risk? Unauthorized access, account compromise, money laundering, data interception and scheming, which Adewale talked about, man in the middle attack, all right? The risk of cyber attackers manipulating AI algorithms by introducing adversarial impute, device vulnerability, and hijacking faster network, more avenues of DDoS, distributed denial of service. All right, so then again, let's talk about the top 24 cyber security trends and predictions. I think, I think we'll just glance through this because I think I've mentioned some of them in the previous slides. So AI power cyber attack surge scarcity of cyber security skills so this is uh, an opportunity for he says that the isc squared isc squared, like i said is uh is a professional association of cyber uh, cyber cyber security professionals and you know according to the workforce study group study of 2023 uh this estimated that the global cyber security workforce gap will be approximately four million that means that four million jobs 4 million jobs 4 million jobs 4 million roles they are not currently occupied so there's opportunity for you next fishing next level fishing attacks fishing attacks are expected to become more sophisticated leveraging advanced techniques and tactics like ai driven personalized content deep fix i shared this in uh in one of our groups yes where someone who happens to be a finance officer all right uh, uh, not just in, initiated, if I wired, yes, that was the word, wired uh, about four, I, I, I can't, I can't, read, uh, four million, four million dollars, 20, I think 20, 24 million dollars, yes, 24 million dollars, wired, wired, and according to that report, the, 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 the finance officer got instruction from a Zoom call, you know, and in that Zoom call, uh, there, there were representatives in that Zoom call. Top top guys were in that meeting, were in the, on that call. Like the CFO, all right, was on that call. The, the CEO was on that call. The decision makers were on that call for this finance officer to consummate that transaction. But guess what? Those guys were actually deep fakes. They were not real human beings. They were deep fakes that were that were used by cyber attackers to learn to um uh, to learn this particular uh finance officer in consummating that transaction so that is the level i've got into now so it does is it, so it has gone beyond so phishing has no has gone beyond sending email for you to click that's using social engineering it has gone beyond that now it has gone beyond that now so guys let's watch out for this and of course, targeted spear phishing campaigns, ransomware evolution, double extortion, ransomware attacks have become more sophisticated and prevalent, causing significant financial losses and disruptions. Deepfakes and synthetic media creating new avenues for misinformation and manipulation. Uh, of course, we also have uh, economic strain impacting society security. The rising inflation and exchange rate fluctuations are likely to strain corporate budget, which will lead to cuts in uh, security uh, spending, All right? I talked about the fact that for a, for a, a, a security needs to have its own budget. But in case, in, 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 a, in a situation where there is economic strain, of course, uh, don't, you, you, don't be surprised. Organization might now say, okay, security should form part of the IT budget. So that is, that, that is also something that we are looking that we're looking at but guess what that is not a problem for you just coming to cyber security and there's work for you to do stringent data privacy regulations all over the world data privacy is becoming a big issue a big issue the nigeria data protection commission introduced more stringent regulations in fact someone shared with me uh, over the weekend all right on the need for as long as you are collecting data from data subjects you have to register all right not not um as long as you have you keep more than uh, ten thousand or two, i think two thousand data subjects yes you have to register with uh the nigeria data protection commission all right 
then rise in API attacks with the gradual adoption of open banking, open banking, such that you can open your, you can open an account, okay, uh, maybe a tier one account, you can open a tier one account uh, online, even uh, using social media, uh, <clears throat> you can open an account. So there will be surge in API attacks. And um, what, what, uh, what, what is that attack? You know, for all those um, uh, uh, links that are provided on social media, they are somehow integrated with uh, the internal system. So as you are providing your details, all right, on on that link, all right, to, that you want to open an account, it is going somewhere. It is going to an organization. And if that API is not properly authenticated, something can go wrong. Third party security risk. I already explained this. Okay, for Solar Winds and uh, Microsoft, Re remote and mobile security attacks. The lines between work and personal lives continue to yeah, our, make it yeah. more So, what is the way forward? The way forward is for you to embrace emerging technology. Whether we like it or not, the technology will keep on evolving. Whether we like it or not. That was guess what? what uh, you guys remember what happened to Microsoft? Uh, sorry, not so uh, to 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 Nokia. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. So the world kept on evolving, and in fact, when they asked the MD, this the, the the MD said the CEO said that he didn't know in fact they did nothing wrong. They did nothing wrong, but by not taking steps to when the world is changing, could actually amount to something wrong. All right. So let's embrace this emerging technology evolve or dissolve also the integration of blockchain and ai driven threat detection can contribute to increased transparency efficiency and adaptive defense mechanisms the other one is adaptive strategy so that's when you need to institute a strategy so when you come to the class we'll teach you about uh, governance uh, governance principles in fact today in the class we talked about uh, cyber security governance in fact, and we looked at uh, uh, a case study where we 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 that we we the, uh, the students were class were, were grouped into two 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 groups all right aha uh -huh. so we looked at so it's practical it's not something that will just teach you uh, what is in no we we teach you practicals and we share our uh, material we discuss materials uh with, with with students all right next is adaptive uh defense move from reactive defense all right uh, uh mechanism to adaptive uh, defense mechanism leveraging AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Move from trust, but verify, to zero trust. All right? Zero trust is talking about uh, for every application, for every uh, for every access you need, you need to do what? You need to always authenticate yourself. All right? For those of us that have a single sign-on, once, once you are signed on, you will tell your, sister, your, your phone that uh, remember me. Remember my password. In the case of zero trust, you have to always authenticate yourself. If you like, authenticate 20 times in a day. You will need to provide those credentials. So strong proactive uh, collaboration with CISO is also paramount. So let's look at other one, robust API security, regulatory frameworks, adaptive resilience. So um, how can you help companies to fight? But you need to get the right education, like we said get the right education by enrolling uh ten analytics all right for the next quarter all right so this uh this is the step that you need to take in the right direction to uh to, to help you you know transition and grow your career from beginner stage to advanced stage so don't worry we have a team of facilitators that will not only teach you but also mentor you until you can stand on, on your own then again you don't need to have a degree all right remember what adiwale said that he has a, a friend all right who works uh for for for, for an andela all right uh, so that is how it is in technology i also know people very many many guys that don't have any certification but they are in fact they are the, they are the main guys all right when it comes to uh product development technology data analytics cyber security we have so many guys like that so what is the career path that you need to take guys so this is it. Look at the example here of the for the entry level between one to three years. It does not matter what your age is. Entry level is not defined by how old you are. All right, it's defined by 
when you join, when you start. So if you join, if you transition now, you will belong to the entry level. And um, your job titles will be uh, Associate Cyber Security Analyst. You can be a Network Security Analyst. You can be a Risk Person. You can be a SOC Analyst. You can be an Application Security Engineer, a System Security, and a whole lot of that. So your education, it might be HND, it might be BSc, it might not be BSc Europa. It might be, uh, it might be. Look at what we what we have here. Education here is what is in business or lib or liberal arts, business or what liberal arts. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Now look at this person here. Certification. Like I said, it does not matter whether you have certification or not. We our analytics will provide you with that required education that will enable you to. Grow. And guess what? See how, see how much you can start with. By now, I think it has even gone beyond seventy-five thousand dollars. You can earn more than this. So, can you see that as uh, from entry level, you transition, you move to uh, mid career, you know, like that, like that, and see what you. So, for you to, for you know it, in the next uh, uh, five to eight years, you can actually become a a, a senior cyber security risk analyst. A principal application security engineer, a compliance officer, a cloud security analyst, you know, and like that, and that's how you begin to grow, all right. And before you now say you want to you want to join the big boys, all right, or be a CIO, you can even become a CISO, like that. So that is how it is. The journey is 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 uh, is very is 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 tasking, all right. But you need to show a uh, commitment. So this is what uh, we have created for you uh, in terms of the roadmap all right to success all right so if you join all right the cohorts all right uh, that are started all right so it takes so it is it is a 12 model course that prepares you for opportunities that lie ahead of you and uh, by may all right you would have gained practical experience your confidence level would have greatly improved all right and by the next month you're already getting your returns on investment. When you speak, when you attend uh, interviews for cybersecurity roles, you too would you would see that something has, has really, really changed about, uh, about yourself because you must have acquired the right knowledge. And by July, you have already uh, landed a cybersecurity role. So can you, start, can you ask that give or take within uh, 10, 11, 12 months, you have... Uh, position yourself for the next uh for your next uh cyber security role all right so by 2024 uh december you begin to look back with appreciation thanking the analytics all right for this decision that you are taking tonight all right so what are the models i will be looking at we'll look at we'll introduce you to cyber security we'll look at foundation of computing and networking we'll also look at security principles offensive and defensive security we we'll look at cryptographic basics uh cyber threats and attack vectors network security endpoint security web and application security cloud security cyber security policies and compliance cyber security career so we, we're not going to just assume that uh you you know we are going to take you from the we are going to uh teach you from the scratch we're going to and hold you so that's the word we're going to and hold you all right and that uh, show you how uh, uh to go about it all right so um that will be that from my end so i let me hand over back to adewale thank you okay thank you so much adewale that was an awesome one um if i were um, a potential student honestly i would sign up already for cyber security. See, one, one honest thing I like about cyber security is the fact that um, it's, it's, um, it's a fulfilling role and it's a role where you'll be saving a lot of people a lot of headaches. Meaning, can you imagine someone working all their life and then overnight someone from nowhere just comes up and, and takes away all they have worked for? Yeah, it can be devastating, yeah. So you are literally a superhero um, working as a cybersecurity um, expert, or sometimes we call them the information systems analyst. So if, if you're looking to, um, 
I did a lot of, can I share my screen now? Um, you can stop sharing this. So if you're looking for, for something purposeful to do, honestly, I think cybersecurity is way to go. Um, so I would like to share my screen again. So just give me the next 15 minutes of your time. And let me, let me tell you a few reasons why you should be a cybersecurity expert. And of course, I'll also like to share, I, I promise you a discount when we started this call. So I'm, I'm, I want to share that discount with you. Uh, this discount is actually limited to those who are on this call only. So it'd be nice if you can stay till the end, till I share the discount. So you can start and join our next call in March. This video is going to go on um, YouTube in another 48 hours maximum. So um, anybody watching might, might want to take advantage of that discount, but then it might be too late then. So this discount I'm going to be giving is for the first 10 people to register and it's going to last for the next 48 hours. So, but first, before we get to that sweet part, I'd like to talk again about why you should, give you more reasons why you should be a cybersecurity expert. We can confirm that there is an increase in the production of um, global digital data. And it is, because of this, um, it is anticipated that cyber attack will, is going to quadruple in the next future. So whatever you are seeing today in terms of cyber attack, phishing emails, people calling you to send your code, like because of the amount of data that is going to be coming out, we have not even seen anything. So because of this, organizations actually looking for cybersecurity expert to be able to prevent these attacks. People like, when I first knew about Yahoo, Yahoo, like maybe like 10 years ago, did I say 10 years ago? I, the first time I knew about Yahoo, Yahoo was like 2003 or 2004, after secondary school then. And you can imagine in my head then, I believe it's going to stop at some point. But then they say there is still update, they are still updating that things are still happening. Yeah, so meaning these guys are still, they are, they, are, they are coming up. People that started private school then are now, are now probably senior year women now. So they are still doing updates, they are updating themselves. So for that, for that fact alone, we need cybersecurity experts also to keep, to come up and, and prevent these attacks and be able to be on the forefront of helping people save their values um, from these malicious attacks. So you, you don't have to waste too much time let me just give you a few hints into some of what the model is going to look like, learning with set analytics. And it, of course, I'm going to throw the disc discounts open. It's for the first 10 people to register and registering on this call. After this video goes on YouTube, the discount is out. Yeah, you might have to wait for um, the next call. But this is for the March call. So basically, um, I'll, I'll like to share what the model looks like on, on Tenalytics. Our Tenalytics, because um, we do not want to waste too much time. If you decide to learn some things on your own, it's easy for you to get lost. Because by the time you're watching this video, reading this article, learning from here, learning from there, you don't actually know where to go, yeah? Most of us at Tenalytics, um, we've, we've gone through that route, yeah, in our career learning from year, 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 because maybe we started when the, um, when the tech industry started booming in Nigeria. Yeah, I started my, I did my first internship with Jumia back in 2014. Yeah, when they were still, um, with, with the likes of the Kemu, Jobago, Kamudi and the likes, and Hello Food that year. So we were just new into it. We had no mentors, we had no, we we're just doing and doing and doing and, you know, learning from here, learning from there. But now we've been able to structure all of this, yeah, for people to be able to transition this day. So we don't, you don't have to go 10 years in the journey. You don't have to go five years to be able to learn what you need to do. We've been able to carefully structure what you actually need, the skills you need. We are not, we are not about um, um, certificates at analytics. We are about the skills. What can you actually do? Then we are able to structure our, our, our courses in a way such that you learn what you need to do to, to start a job. And of course, every other stuff that you need in terms of packaging you up for the job, we do all of that on the side. But basically, we structure your course in, in three to four months, give you, put you in a real life scenario where you do real life work and then build your portfolio, you're good to go. You don't have to go five years learning by yourself, go six years, go 10 years learning by yourself. 
honestly, if without mentorship, yeah, the least you would need for any tech career, the least you would do without mentorship, you probably do two, three years, to be honest. But the analytics have come to help you structure what you need to learn, what you need to do, so that you don't go that route. You don't, you don't do the 40 years in, in the wilderness. Yeah, you can always do the 40 days and of course get to the promised land. So as a cybersecurity analyst, yeah, of course, from what Adedolakwa has told us, from what I've mentioned so far, they play a very crucial role in protecting organizations' data in terms of their computer system and their networks from cyber attacks. And to be honest, if you find yourself in the UK, Canada and US, I believe some of us are on this call are from that region. As a cybersecurity um, expert analyst in the UK, you'll be earning over 54,000. That's the average. Yeah, in Canada, you, you're earning over 140,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, you'll be learning over one to five. If you are thinking about Japan, to be honest, you should be doing this. You should be learning a skill like this. You don't want to get there and, and be washing plates for anybody or you'll be looking for a care job, or you're looking for a factory job. Yeah, this is a worthy investment, trust me. If, if you were here yesterday, there was this awesome session we had with one lady called Uzoma. I hope she would permit me to speak about her case here. Uzoma knew what she wanted. Before she left Nigeria, she took her time to do her research. She became a business analyst, which is one of the courses that we offer. She became a business analyst before she got to, the, to Canada. Two months inside in Canada, she got a very good job. And she said the job wasn't something that, that, that she managed. She told them what she wanted and they paid her. Like she even when she got home, she got the job two hours after the interview. Two hours after the interview. And when she got home, she, she was thinking to herself, man, I should have asked for more. And she probably would have gotten it. So if you are thinking about traveling or you are already in the diaspora, learn a tech skill, to be honest. You don't have to do a lot of coding. I think I saw someone put that in the chat. You don't have to do a lot of coding with some of this, but they are high demand text. They are, we call them low code or no code careers that you can actually delve in and then start moving fast as, as, as you can. To be honest, this is a decision I believe a lot of people should be making because in five years, you would, you would God keep everyone alive. Yeah. In five years, you will be where you are and you will be five years older or you can be, Five, in five years' time, take this decision and become someone who has a five years' experience in, in, in um, cybersecurity. You can see the career path that the dollar for mentioned. In five, as you grow in the career, your, um, your pay also grows, your experience grows, your level of understanding grows. And of course, if you're in the tech industry, you can't, you can't learn finish. Tech industry is not a place where you say, okay, I, to you. I don't savvy. You know, you don't savvy anything. You have to keep updating and being on top of your game. And as much as you do that, in five years, you are, you are, you are an expert at probably the latest tools and you are, you are earning good money and happy you made a good decision transitioning into tech. Of course, let me run through the learning, key learning areas. I did like what just mentioned the models of the way we structure the courses on at analytics. I'm going to just run through the, the key learning areas. And of course, when you, you come to class, you will learn more about all of this. Of course, um, our learning structure, our learning is, is structured in a way such that for every class you come to, you are not just saying introductory type of cyber security foundation of all of this. We are actually putting up a case study. So whatever you are learning, you are working through a case study. So that way the knowledge sticks immediately into your head. So you are not just coming to write notes and put all of that. You are actually doing something you would do. So you are learning network security as you would do in a real life work. In a, in a real life work scenario. So introductory cyber security, foundations of computing and networking, information security principles, offensive and defensive cyber security, cryptography basic, cyber threat and attack vectors, network security, endpoint security, web and application security, cloud security, incident response and forensic, cyber security policies and compliance. So these are the key learning areas. Once you learn all of this, yeah, the, the program timeline is four months. You learn all of this in, in, in three months. Then one month, we are, like I said, we are going to have a real life work, real, real world project that you're going to work with, such that when you have all of these skills, yeah, you have the skills and you have a portfolio to show. That's the essence of the one month internship. So you can always say, HR um, 
Madam HR or Uncle HR, this is the skills I have. I can do this, I can do that. I understand cryptography basics. I can do incident response and forensics. I know about cybersecurity policies and compliance. But besides that, this is what I have also done. That is what that one month will do for you. This is something you will not get anywhere, to be honest. Udemy would not give you a one month internship. Coursera will never give you a one month internship. Yeah, if you know about anybody that does this, they, they probably started yesterday. And that is the basics. That is what makes you, that makes you stand out in tech. If you know people that are tech professionals over time, look at some of them, look at their, for instance, my friend I was talking about, I'm glad Ade, Ade Dako, the Lapo mentioned him in a bit. This guy told me something about GitHub, yeah? If you're on GitHub on a daily basis, yeah, there's a way it shows. And when your recruiter check, asks for your GitHub account and they show, it will show that this guy is working on a daily, yeah? He's doing, he's working, he's working on projects. So they want to see what you can do. Not, not your certificate. Nobody cares about your certificate. You can say you have PhD in, what can you do? That is the focus. So that is what we have been able to help people with, with our one month internship, such that we are learning the skill on one hand, and on the other hand, we are giving you real life projects so that you can say, I cannot only, you're not, even, you're not just speaking jargon that are related to cybersecurity, but you're actually showing a portfolio that tells exactly what you have done and using that as a scenario-based um, conversation with your HR professional and um, with your HR manager. So a lot of all of this seems impossible until it is done. Um, December 2022, when I decided that, bro, you've been doing marketing for close to six years now, data is, 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 is part of life now, literally. And even your marketing, you can't move forth without being able to make data-driven decision. And I took, decided to take that journey to start my data career. And today, I, 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 can, I can do a lot of things with marketing data. I can help companies make decisions. A lot of people also have, have thought about joining the data journey or becoming, joining um, the tech, starting a tech career. But then at the very, very first start, it always seems impossible until it is done, yeah? And based off that, I'd like to share a few stories here yeah, for some of our, our, our students that have gone on to, from the classroom to become um, data um, experts in terms of different roles now, the business analysis, analysis analytics, um, business analysis, data analytics, um, data science, data engineering. My friend, the Olu Atosi, yeah, we, our mentorship and our interview prep sessions, he became a fourth analyst in, in the UK and then um, helped to prevent credit card fraud. Ikmat was a full-time mom. Ikmat said she had to stay back at home to take care of her children for four years. But then when she felt it was time for her to start to get a job, she came across our, our, one of our ads on Instagram. She joined and then, you know, by the time she, by the time she, will, be, she will finish, she got a job. In fact, she got two offers in the UK and one came with a full visa sponsorship. You know, I don't want to, uh, to say too much story because I have a whole lot of them. I have Temi Vogan, he was a lawyer. Now he's a business ana ana um, anal analyst. With, and after his training with analytics, um, Ramat here got also a full visa sponsorship and became a, a business analyst after our training. But I would like to talk about, I'd like to share um, Ramat's story in more details. So let me play this video quickly. So you can hear from the horse's mouth. So it's not just me um, telling these people stories myself, but um, I'd like for you to hear from them individually. Let me, let me just stop sharing so I can share that exact screen again. And you can see, you can watch the video. One second, please. Okay. Sorry, one second. Let me just let me go over this again. I just wanted to hear from Ramat and hear our story. So this is not this is not some some curated um, story to to sound uh, to sound all sweet. This is this is real life.
Joining analytics has been the please confirm you see my screen and share what you see. You know, Just for me, PBS someone coming job. from a background of full housewife, because I had to stay back home to look after my child for four years. And then wanting to break into something new, wanting to go back into, like, yes, into if the you can hear what she's saying. You know, wanting to place myself in the society for better job opportunities. So it was a lot. And then I'm glad that Tenalytics came along and then they presented me with so many opportunities right in front of me, better opportunities. And then I'm glad I took it. And then <clears throat> uh, also the advice of do not sell yourself short, that if it, it's always the, it's very, very valid because place yourself right, you know, don't sell yourself short. It's a very, very, very valid advice. You know, in analytics, they will hold your hands like a child, you know, through, through the models, you have to, you have the opportunity to go back and study, you have the opportunity to go back and practice, you have the opportunity to ask questions, you know, we have people you can always go back to even outside of class, class hours, it's, it's the most amazing experience so far really, and then another thing is the interview prep, guys, that is another very important thing, I did my interview prep with Mr. Mohammed and it was the best decision ever because it was like he saw into the future, he knew what was going to be asked. And I'm glad that I took, I wrote down all the things he mentioned, I went back to practice, and then when it was time for the interview, it was like everything he was mentioning, everything he mentioned, it was just, they kept on. And then when I was answering those questions, I was so confident, you know, because I already practiced. I did an Excel test, I did a math test, and then they were really impressed. And another thing is, guys, it may not come as fast as you expect. Definitely, you are going to get some no's, and then you may begin to think you're not good enough. You are good enough, yes. The no's will come, but always take it as a basis for learning and development, because after every interview where I got a no, I always make sure I get a personal feedback. So I work on those feedbacks for my next interviews, and yes, it worked. It really worked for me, because I got my first job three months into the program, my first job. I couldn't take up the job because I was, I was a student and I was only eligible to do to work 20 hours. So I couldn't take up the job. Three months later, I got two jobs with full visa sponsorship. And guys, all the other no's before the two jobs prepared me for the yeses I got. So yes, the no's will come, but do not give up because you always have the analytics to go back to. They are the best and the best thing that's ever happened to me. And then, yes, um, and they are the uh, most affordable. The most affordable one I've come across so far. And that's a very good advantage. So, yes, analytics for the win. All right, so um, that was Rama's story. I'll just go back to the slide quickly. Um, Okay, so that was Ramat's story. Ramat is one of our students, like, he, like she mentioned, from a full-time housewife to um, getting a full-time job with full visa sponsorship. They look most of them on our on our um, on our YouTube channel. I advise you to to check them. We, as a matter of fact, we have testimonials coming in on a daily basis. Like I mentioned last year alone, we had over eight hundred and fifty people from our classrooms to a job because. It's something we have tried and we see that it works. Yeah, you don't have to learn for years to be able to get a job. Learn what you need to learn. Then, of course, there are a lot of other things that we we, we, we use to position you as a professional. And I'm going to talk a bit about them now. So we have Michael here. I will landed his first job in the UK. Um, Idris landed a, in a, a job in the UK also as a data engineer after training with us. Um, Sonia landed a job as an HR analyst in the UK. I'm going to talk about, an interesting thing about Sonia Air is how we helped her with her LinkedIn profile, such that recruiters are able to reach out to her. Yeah, she didn't have to send so much um, um, CVs around. There is the LinkedIn optimization exercise that we perform with our students. She was able to do that, do it very well. And I mean, HR professionals actually found her, yeah, and gave her the kind of job that she wanted to do. Solomon here is a financial analyst with, with um, Kegel's group in Nigeria here. 
he got that job after training with Tenalytics. Um, Chika landed a full-time job as a financial analyst in the UK after, after his training with us. Also, another interesting story is Olubemi. Olubemi actually learned what he needed to learn before going to Canada. And on getting there, he didn't have to go there to go and do many jobs. He landed a, a, a good job as a business data analyst just a few months after, after, after landing in, um, in, in Canada. Then we have to here also, a whole lot of them. But then let me show you why you should train with analytics. Like I said, I've said this like five times now, but then I will say it again. We have 850 people transition from the classroom to their first job in tech across UK, US, Canada, Europe, and Asia. Yeah, 850. I'll repeat it one more, 850 people. Yeah. Now let me show you why you should join analytics. First, our curriculums are up to date. Yeah, I did the that you saw here. I told you he's the head of compliance at Unity Bank and cybersecurity at, at Unity Bank. So they take, they, they come to you at week, our classes happen on the weekend. They come to you on the weekend to pour in all they know and pour it out, all, all, all they know to their students over the weekend. But during the, the week, they have their jobs that they are doing. They are up to date on what's going on. Yeah, they are industry experts with hands-on experience. They are, doing, they are doing the work on a daily. So they are up on top of the trend. They know what's going on. And all of that is what they bring to the class. So their curriculums are up to date. They are doing their own full-time job themselves. So they are not coming to give you what they learned five years ago in university or somewhere. Somewhere They are, they are showing you what is actually going on real time. Of course, our training is also blended such that, like I said, it happens on weekend. So every weekend, Adidolapo and other facilitators that we have, they are going to share their screen show you what is really going on. They are training, they will, they will really literally hold your hand through the class. Then on Sunday, you receive a recording that prepares you for the next class. So over the week, you can always go to that recording, watch what's going on, and then to prepare you for the upcoming class. Then from the class that you also did on Saturday, if you, if you are unable to attend class or you miss class for any reason, but with advice that you don't miss classes, please. If you don't, if you're, if you're unable to, then there's a recording from Saturday that you also watch alongside to ask questions. Then of course there are dropping sessions during the week. Those dropping sessions are where you now interact with your fellow students and also there are course coordinators where you can now ask questions like, oh, last Saturday you said something in class. Me, I don't understand it. Explain it to me. So you're a fast learner, a slow learner, average learner, however you learn, however you understand, you're able to carry everybody along. And also I must mention this discount is for 10 people. However, our classes take a limited number of students. So once that, once that class is full, we don't take any more because we do not want to carry too much such that we are not able to um, carry everybody along. Our goal is to help everybody as much as you are willing. There is an adage in my language that if you are able, if you spread your hand, then your mom will carry you, literally. So a baby that spreads the hand. So you would also come with the mindset that I want to do this. I want to change my path my career path, I want to learn, I want to, I want to grow in tech, yeah? Once you come with that attitude, then you're in the right place to turn up analytics. Then we have additional employability services. I'm going to go into details with that, yeah? In, in the next slide, additional employability services. So it's not just about you learning now. What are the other things that, that you wouldn't get from watching a YouTube video to learn cybersecurity? What are the additional things that you wouldn't get if you pay for a course at, on data camp or, or pay for a course on, on Udemy or Coursera. What are those additional services? Those are the things that prepare you, that makes you look like, like a 10 year professional of which that is what you are. You've done a lot of things before you transitioning into tech, yeah? And the tech you have done in four months, how do we now link it to what you have done in the past? I will show you in details how we're able to do that. Then finally, the internship that we said is going to simulate a real life work environment. It is not about what you know, but what can you do? Yeah. So we are able to blend all of this together. And of course, we are now ready to be a tech. This is what, so there is no, there is, there is no magic. With all of this arranged together, this is what makes you ready to be able to say, okay, I'm a tech professional and now I can get a job. This is what, with all of this, with your own devotion and your time and your commitment, with all of this that we have arranged, 
you can actually run through our program in four months for real. And in a month or two, you can actually land your first tech job. Again, type 10 analytics into YouTube. Maybe after this call, 10 analytics in YouTube. Look at our testimonial session. If you count less than 100 videos, then you come back and tell me that I'm, I'm telling you lies. 100 videos in testimonials, meaning 100 students that are willing and happy to share their story to encourage a lot more other people. But for my, our own records, people that we have, we have given reference letters, I'm going to talk about that later. Reference letters in part of our employability services. We've, we've given out over 850, and those are the people that have come back to tell us, thank you, we've gotten our first job in tech. So now there is a, a three-layered approach that we use to position you. Now, after you have learned, you've made your commitment, you've burnt the midnight candles. Now, what are the three-layered approach that we have designed to be able to help you succeed in the job market? So I'm going to start with the first level. That's the CV review. Bro, you need to see the, read the CV of a lot of people. CVs are, are looking like, oh my God. So you need to, first things first, your CV need to reflect that you are coming into tech. We do, we, it doesn't, we are able to, in a way, manage whatever it is you have been doing. You have been a fashion designer all your life, been a, a, a roadside mechanic, you've been a lawyer, been a doctor. You are able to structure what you have been doing all your life to this point that you want to transition into tech and be able to make that um, presentable to your potential employers. So we have CV review sessions that we help you to structure this, yeah, by helping you to apply certain keywords. And again, they are what you call, uh, they are this ATS system that HR professionals use. We call them application or application tracking um, software. So this software, if, they, if you see a role out there and they throw out, um, and like maybe like a thousand people apply for job, you will notice that some people, maybe within three hours, you will tell them, oh God, you are not, you are not needed yet because that software itself is going to cut out some people based off their CV. Your CV is not looking good enough to pass through that ATS system, um, ATS software, the application tracking software. So for you to be able to first scale through that, there are things that need to be on your CV. That is the first thing we help you do in the CV review sessions, yeah? So you can now make it through the, the first stage of things. Now the CV gets to a real person that will now look at it and be able to say, okay, you have this, you have this, then let's look at your portfolio. So you can even have a portfolio where your CV is not well aligned. It doesn't pass through the ACS. Then again, your portfolio wouldn't even be useful. So that is why we don't just give you the skills. We don't give you the internship for you to have your portfolio set up. We now go back to your CV itself. Let's look at your CV and let's help you align it properly. And of course, the LinkedIn optimization. A lot of professionals now, everybody around the world now knows that LinkedIn is the number one place where you can actually find a community of professionals. HR, HR managers are taking advantage of that. So now I've you known how many people actually come to me on, um, on LinkedIn and say, okay, there's this opportunity, would you like to, you know? It's because my LinkedIn um, page is optimized well enough for that. So you also have to be in that position. I mentioned Sonia earlier. Sonia got a job via LinkedIn. She did not apply. Someone reached out to her and told her, we, we searched for a, a data analyst, we searched for cyber security um, experts, and you came up as a top talent. And of course, they had to invite her for an interview. Then of course, there's the upwork optimization also. This is for people who are probably looking to do some freelance gigs. Most of the freelance gigs I have done was from upwork. I did, my first was um, in Turkey in 2017. It was a three month gig. That was the first time I was earning a dollar. Three month gig in Turkey. I've done in France. I've done in the US, UK. I've done in, in across Africa, Kenya, Ghana. Upwork is where I got those jobs. You need to optimize your Upwork um, page. So all of that, we are going to show you how to do it. We are not leaving you in the dark on how to do, get your remote job, work from, from the comfort of your home. And of course, navigating the job market can be a bit dicey, yeah? You don't know which job to apply for. You say because you are a data analyst, you see things like a data, something, something analyst, something added to data, then you'd be like, okay, this is not what I know. But then as a data analyst, there are a thousand roles out there. It depends on how it is structured. I've seen, um, for instance, I've seen roles related to um, marketing or marketing data analysts, but then you will see digital data analysts. You will see market research analysts. You will see um, um, market 
market and sales analysts, you know, things like that. But then you feel like, oh, because I did only data ana anal analy analytics, I may not be able to do all of those shows. But then if you have a, a background in marketing and you're delving into data analytics, then the market research analyst could be a role we can. So how do you understand how all of this work? How do you navigate your way around that? We have sessions, mentorship sessions that takes you through all of this. Then of course, this is, I'm getting to the sweet part now. Now we have job interviews and preparation. So if you get an interview tomorrow now, like you get invited for an interview, before you go there, you can always reach out to Tenalytics and tell them, this is the job I'm going for. I have an interview in, in two days or in three days. And one of our facilitators is going to actually prep you. Look at that, C, um, that job description. Then they are going to mimic a real life um, scenario of what the interview might look like. Ask you the questions that will probably come up and then you, uh, you respond, you jot down points, we give you our feedback. All of that will give you that confidence. Now tell me how many people have, how many places you have seen that happen before. But all of these are intentionally put in place for you to be able to make your journey smooth because we know that you, you are going to need it. So we have put that as part of our package. So for every of our students, they get an opportunity, an invite for an interview. They can always reach out to us. We we'll prepare you before the interview happens so that it gives you a, 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 an edge to um, move ahead. Then of course, there is recommendation letter and reference letter. So if you do that one month, so I told you your training, four months training, you do three months of, of learning and all of that, coming to class. And then again, there is the one month of in, uh, internship. So that one month internship, all the projects that you do, you come back, we give you our feedback, you do all of that nice stuff. And when you are done, you prepare your portfolio. So when you get to your recruiters, yeah, of course, they will ask you for your reference. Meaning, you say you have been a lawyer all your life, but in the past six to seven months, you've done so much in tech. Who, who say, who, where you come from? Who, who can vouch for you? Analytics is going to do that. So far, you've done your part. You've learned what we have. Um, you've, you attended sessions. You've done all your learning. You've done your portfolio, um, your projects, your one month internship with us. You've come back to, you can also even put analytics as a place you work for intern, as an intern on your, um, on your LinkedIn profile. All of this is to assist you, to give you that leverage. Coursera will not give you reference data, to be honest. Udemy will never give you a reference data. But analytics is going to vouch for you. But like I said, because you have done your own part, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, not, it's, a, it's a mutual thing, yeah? You have done your part, then we will do our own part to vouch for you and say, okay, we can refer this person or we can recommend this person as a, as a cybersecurity expert who knows um, what they are doing. Then the second level of this is the weekly mentorship. All of this that I mentioned in level one, they happen in weekly mentorship. We will we, we, we call you up for, for mentorship. We, we advise you on how to review your CV, we tell you about what's happening in the job market. We invite people who have gone through the same route. So some of our students are so happy with what we have done for them that they come back and they say they want to give back also. So meaning for every student that, are just, that we are enrolling, they want to mentor them. Yeah, so we have mentorship sessions where we link you up with people that probably left, they finished and got their jobs two, three, four months ago. Yeah, we link them up back to you and they help you to make your journey a lot smoother also. Then the one other thing here is the on the job support. So when you get the job as a newbie, you have this imposter syndrome where you feel like, oh, more. maybe the analytics have been able to package me and package me and I've gotten a job within, a, within six months or within four months, yeah? The on the job support now is you still being able to come back and be like, oh, um, there is something they just mentioned in my job now about the analytics. Um, it's, it, I think it's pretty new. You have any idea about it? We're always there to support you. Jump on a call with you if you need us to. If there's any project you need us to help you align, you always be able to do that for you. So on the job support is also secured for you, at least to, to be able to now gain your, your feet and strength firm, and stand firm um, once you transition. So with all of this package together, yeah, we can assure you that you are guaranteed a, a, a job interview one month after completing the training with analytics. Yeah, that is what we can promise you. But like I said, there are two sides to this. Yeah, you do your part, we do our part. Your part is that you have, you have your laptop, you have your internet, and you have the commitment 
you've, you've thought about it very well and you know that, okay, in, in a year time, I want to be called a cybersecurity expert. In a year time, I want to be a data analyst. In a year, I want to be a professional data engineer, full stack data scientist. You've thought about it. You know that is what you want to do with your life. Yeah. And then you've come with that ginger, that motivation to turn on it. You are prepared to take you on that journey. And by the time you are done, one month after, in fact, from the very first, um, very first module of your courses, we already give you what you need enough to be able to start looking, um, to start applying for jobs. Yeah. By the first first month, you should be starting. We encourage you to start applying for jobs. So, so that all the no's, we had Rama talk about all the no's that you get will prepare you for the yes. So all the so so the, from the very first month, we put you out there deep into the ocean, start applying for jobs, start start nurturing yourself, and before you know, you are able to land your job as quickly as possible. So, like I mentioned, there's the growth internship that we offer a free one month internship program makes your resume stand out. It is not about what you know, but what you can do. So that one month internship program is what we, um, we provide. Like I said, no, they have not, personally, if you have seen any, just let me know. You can put it in the comment section. I have not seen any training institute that offers you growth internship, yeah? What you will see is they will teach you what they want to teach you and they leave you out there in, to go and sort yourself out. Or we'll give you that internship, one month internship, for you to have real life projects that you can add to your resume and be like, okay, this is what I know, this is what I can do. It is not just this is what I know. Yes, you know it, what can you do? So it is a, a, a case of what I know and what I can do. So that is what our internship program provides for you. So basically, this is the best part. Yeah, I said there are, there are discount for the first 20 people on this call, you are able to make payment, yeah? For our program, cybersecurity, the full amount is $900 if you are paying in dollars. If you're in the UK and you're paying in, in pounds, it's 750. And if you're paying in Naira, it's 1,080,000 Naira. But then, like I said, from the beginning of this course, whoever, if you're able to make it to this point, I congratulate you, you qualify for the discount. And if this, this discount is going to end within the next 48 hours, because that is when this video is going to go live on YouTube. By that time, it's open to the public. So take advantage of this discount right on this call. If you want to join our cybersecurity program and you can pay 750 instead of the 900, or you can pay the 625 pounds instead of the seven, um, 750 pounds, or you can pay 900,000 instead of the 1,080,000 Naira. And the, another good part of being on this call is that you can make a first payment to secure your discount. Yeah, you do not have to make the full payment now. Make a first payment of $550 or pay, pay for six, 460 pounds or 660,000 Naira as your first payment to secure your discount. Then by the time you join the class, before the next, um, before the, you end your first month, then you can balance up your payment. So, uh, my colleagues on the call, we are going to, they are going to share the link for you to make the payment via PayPal or Paystack. Or if you want to do a direct bank transfer, you can also do that on this call. For the first 20 people, yeah, I'm supposed to do this for first 10 people. But then I think, yeah, you can go for the first 20 people that you're able to make that payment on this call. Then you qualify for that discount and you are, you are good to begin your journey. So. The, the honest truth about this is, I always put this analogy. Imagine yourself from, or get a calculator, calculate how much you have spent on education from, from your kindergarten to this age. You probably can't calculate it. Now, imagine you did not have any education from your, from your kindergarten till now. Imagine, try and place your life in those two scenarios. But then you have that education. That is why you are even able to register for a webinar like this and say you want to see what's going on. So if you look at the, the coin factor, like I would say with my friends, if you look at the coin factor, yeah, you might not want to do I have seen students who said they literally got a loan to register because they knew the value and now they are earning good money. I showed you about 140,000 is the average you earn as a cybersecurity analyst in Canada. 140,000. 
compared to how much you are paying here to begin your career and with the added value that you are also putting on the table at analytics. So personally, I would advise that you take advantage of this and then begin your journey immediately. Um, the, 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 the thing is, in another five years, you can you can you can be 35 years, sorry, you can be five years older and is a, a, a cyber security expert, or you are or you are five years older and you are not. Yeah, the decision or the difference is probably nine hundred thousand naira now, or or seven hundred and fifty dollars, or six hundred and twenty-five. The difference, to be honest, and that's the truth. That's the reality. I'm not even trying to make sweet map now. The difference between you being a cyber security expert in five years and not being a cyber security expert is just this amount that you see here. So take advantage of this discount and make the payments as quickly as you can. I'm going to just let me check through this link so you can see what it looks like once you open it to uh, make payments. Once that loads up, I'm going to share that part of screen. Please give me a second. Let me show you what the enrollment center looks like. My colleagues will be sharing the links with you, like I mentioned. I'll just take a quick run through what you're going to see once you decide to make payments using that link. Um, let me share my screen again, one second, please. Okay. All right, so this is what the enrollment center looks like. Um, from here, you can click on this to get access to all the brokers for all the courses that we have. Yeah, like I mentioned, um, this is the prices. So if you're thinking about other courses that we, that we offer, data analytics, business analysis, HR analytics, and all of that, you can check about check their prices here also. Um, I don't know if I should do this, but then the discount also applies for all of all those other ones too, if you, if you decide that you want to go with them. But the major concern here is I believe most of the people on this call came here for cybersecurity. So the price here, you see, the price is the same here, like I mentioned. So you can always join. Then we also offer Scrum Master also, in case you're also thinking about that. Then when you are done with your payment, you can come here to upload, click on this link. It will take you to where you can upload your details. And our admissions officer will pick it up and get you set for the next cohort, which is in starts March 2nd. Our cohorts are monthly, and they start for the first weekend in the month. So this one I'm talking about is going to start by, by this on the 2nd of March. So these are the bank details if you're paying um, from the UK, um, you can or, or you're paying in pounds. You can you can do your transfer into this account. If you are making, um, if you are paying with your card, but not naira, maybe dollar or pounds, and you're paying for any of these courses, you can select from this. Um, let me select cyber security here. So once that loads up, I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you how that works. So basically, once that loads up. You can now select if you are making a full payment or, or a part payment, then select which one you are doing. If you want to, you can make the full payment. Or if you want to make a part payment, then to secure your discount, you can do that also. Then make the payment quickly. Then you come back to the same page to upload um, to upload your payment details so that our admissions officer can pick that up. Um, for if you are paying in Naira, yeah, you can select all programs here through our pay start link. That also like, directs you to pay start. I believe a lot of us on this call have, have used pay start one time or the other before. So that one is pretty straightforward. You can always do that. Then again, the most convenient for Naira payments, you want to do a bank transfer to our Fidelity Bank, do that transfer. Then of course, again, you come take a screenshot of your transfer, go back, come back up here, come back up here, upload your receipts. And once you do that, admissions officer is going to reach out to you immediately to congratulate you and then um, add you to the, for the next cohort. So if you're paying, um, so if you make a part payment, yeah, so if you're using any of the links, you are either doing a full payment or a, or a part payment, yeah? Or if you want to now make your, pay your balance, you can use any of these links, but this is later. Let me not mix, uh, um, make it too uh, much for you to digest. So cybersecurity, let me let me share the other screen. I think I'm have to share all my screen to make things a lot easier. Um, I want to share. Uh, okay, I think I can. Okay, so if you are paying cybersecurity, 
Now, so you can, so once I click on server security, that it brings me here. Now you can um, reserve your seats by selecting the amount. Okay. Okay, enter your details here. Okay, so okay, for, for this one, I would advise that you just use the direct, because I, I understand a lot of people now being able to pay even that much, to be honest, using a card, um, 900,000 era using a card. So I would advise that you just use our direct transfer here for if you're paying in Naira, or if you're paying in the, in, from the UK or US or Canada, you can just do a transfer to this um, WISE bank account using this account details. My colleagues on the call are going to share those details with you on this call. And I'd like to see your payments drop in so that you can secure your discount um, immediately. So having said that, I'll just go back to the slide, show you a few things more about people who have registered for our courses and how we've been able to, um, by our own little means, transform their life and help them transition into tech. Again, Rackmat is one of our, 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 our top 10, or our top five rather. So we'd always put that up from there. Being out has been searching for jobs for over two years. After joining our program, he landed a business analyst role in Poland. And Ramat also landed a business analyst role um, after only three months with us um, um, in the UK. So I'll advise you to join the next course happening March 2024. Um, do not be left out. Begin that journey. It always seems impossible until it's done. In, if, if you think about what you want to tell yourself by, by December this year, what do you want to say? Do you want to say you attended a webinar that they talked about cybersecurity and you didn't make that decision and you didn't make that move? Or you want to be somewhere thinking yourself that you made that decision and here you are ending in six figures as a cybersecurity um, expert. The discount is for the first 20 people, and please take advantage of it and join us quickly. More testimonials here. You are going to be getting this slide. Please fill your attend fill the attendance form so that you can get this slide sent to you. And of course, a recording of the video also. But like I said, once the recording goes live, this discount might not be able to, you might not be able to apply for everyone. Um, so these videos, we follow most of these guys actually recorded videos for us as testimonials. They sent us messages via chat, and you can see um, being guy here chatting with our founder here, um, Adesa. These are screenshots from that conversation. So these are not um, um, fables. These are these are real life story, real people that we have touched. And like I said, our mentorship sessions, most of these guys are giving back to the community in a way to the Tenalytics community, literally, meaning students that are coming in, they also come to um, mentor them, help them on their own journey also to be able to, because the idea is that data, data shows right now that a lot of the immigrants in, in Canada, for instance, 50% of the tech jobs there are, are taken by, by, by Indians, while the Africans just go there to do the menial jobs, which is not fair. Of the, of the top 10, there is no African country, and of which, sorry, of the top 10, only Nigeria appear, of which Nigeria takes 5% of those jobs. Imagine 5% of those jobs, when India is taking more than 50%. So you don't have to go to all those places and go and be doing washing plates for anybody. You can actually learn a tech skill, and with proper mentorship, which is what we are offering, you can actually make it happen quicker than you imagine, yeah? You can spend five years, three years trying to do it on your own, or you, or you pay for a proper mentorship, pay for a structured learning that can get you there much, much faster. It's like you want to walk to Abuja or you take a flight. There are two ways to get to Abuja. You can also use a bicycle, it's allowed. You can use your Teke Marwa, it's allowed, or you can take a flight, but it depends on, so paying for that flight, yeah, we'll get you there in, in 45 minutes, or get you there in, in an hour, or you take a Teke Marwa, and you get there in, 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 in five years. Yeah, so it's, the decision is totally left to you. But then trust me, based on these testimonials that you have seen, you can tell that 
um, this is something we are proud to let people know, proud to share with people. And it's a journey that a lot of people have taken and, and changed their life. And we are, we are ready to take as many people as possible on that journey with us. So if you're on this call, I congratulate you. You are lucky to be here. Joint analytics, and it's a decision you will, be, you will thank yourself that you made in the next six months, maximum, yeah? So these are a lot more stories here. Um, and of course, I should mention this. You shouldn't, you shouldn't keep this kind of information to yourself. Please, if there's anyone within your circle, anyone within your network that you think this would be valuable to anybody that you know, maybe your siblings that are tr trying to travel um, or leave the country or still in Nigeria want to up, 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 update themselves on the, or, or want to transition into tech, share, let them tell them about the analytics story, tell them what we are doing here so that they can do, they can join and, and, and upgrade their lives also. Why am I saying this? This, my friend here, Utman, did not attend a session like this. His own brother did attend. And after learning, hearing about what we could do, his brother actually paid for him to join our program. And Utman landed a full-time job at the NHS US as a business intelligence officer after training with us, yeah? So you can always refer and tell someone about this, yeah? While you gather your own money. There is a story of a lady also who actually, who, who brought someone in. She was thinking about, okay, I'll pay tomorrow. In fact, the person she brought in paid immediately. And before you know it, that person finished the program, got a job. She was still looking for, for, for the money. I don't want that to be your story, but I, of course, share this with someone else and you'll be glad you did. A lot more testimonials here. Take your time to look through them. Then again, you might be saying you're in Nigeria. How do you do all of this? Our friend Abdul Rashid is here in Nigeria, somewhere in, in Abuja, living cozy. Yeah, he's a data scientist with Child24, a company in the US. So you can actually get the remote jobs directly from Nigeria too. Yeah, depending on how well you, you polish yourself and get ready for what's out there. Um, so a lot more testimonials out here. Um, today, I said last year we did 850. Well, over time, since we started analytics, we've done over 2,000 people transition into tech. And most of our students work in some of these companies that you see here, both in Nigeria and abroad. A lot of impactful stories, um, stories that have, been, that have gone about us, Naira Metrics, Business Day, um, Punch newspapers, and the likes. Um, we also organize hackathons, yeah, that will feature top tech talents at, across the globe. And then, uh, of course, um, there are cash prizes to be won. We partner with um, a lot of um, people, some, some private philanthropists, to offer grants to women, especially, who want to transition into tech to reduce the prices for them. So this is the news about some of the wonderful things you have done. You can check and search on tech about, about some of these stories. So if you are ready to gain that premium tech skills, Ten Analytics is your best bet. You are your go-to, your partners, where are your, where your, where your body on that journey. So you can reach our website, uh, send us an email. Um, some of my colleagues are on this call. You can chat anybody up. You can chat me up. And also, um, you can chat these phone numbers on WhatsApp, and they'll be glad to take your questions and your requests. If you made your payment, please reach out to anybody on this chat, um, on this call. You can also reach out to me personally, and I'll be able to help you. Everybody at Analytics is, we are just, we are, to be honest, not trying to be to brag, but we are awesome people. If I'm the one you meet up with and you need, your, need some help, I'm, I'll take it up. If you meet a customer success manager, they'll take it up. If you meet our social media manager, it's going to take your case up like that. So we are, we are passionate about what we do. And then we are ready to help many people transition as many people as possible that we can help to bring on that journey. So if you have any questions, I think I'll take one or two questions before I let us go. Um, or you can type them in the chat section. Questions for me or questions for Adi Delapo. And then, um, We'll be able to answer that question before we call it um, a day or a night or depending on where you are. So any questions, feel free to raise, use the raise and icon and we'll take your questions. Um, okay, you can drop your questions in the chat too. So we'll wait for that for Mr. Mohammed raise his hand. Um, Okay, please go ahead. Can you speak now? Hello. Hello. 
Good day, everyone. All right, welcome, Mr. Morris. Um, please, I have two questions to ask. Um, I would like All to right. know the, the difference between the cyber security and the CISA, because you made mention of CISA, and it was CISA I've been, I know, I have idea about. So I want to know the difference. And secondly, what are the exams that is required as a cyber security? Okay. Um, I don't know, Lapo, if you are still on the call, I'd like for you to take that question. Is that the Lapo still on this call? Okay, so I think the Lapo might have dropped off this call. So I'm going to share um, my email with you. Send me an email. Then I'm going to link you up with Adi Dolapo. He's going to take that question. I think he's not on this call anymore. So he's going to take that question. He's the expert um, in cybersecurity. Yeah, he's going to answer that question. So I'm going to share my email with you now. And then you can always shoot me an email. I'll link you up with Adi Dolapo. And he's going to answer that question um, as clearly as possible. Is that fine, Mr. Mohamed? Is it on the chat box, Abi? Yes, in the chat box. I'm sending my email to okay. you now. So you just send me okay. a personal email. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right, um, Queen Adi, can you please ask your question? Um, good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. I've been following this um analytics for a while now. I'm actually interested and I think I'm ready to move, but I am confused on which of the three um the three programs I would like to go to. I don't know which one because I've been online. I've been trying to do a lot of research on my own. I don't know which one I should go for exactly. The reason I'm saying is this because I intend going to study in Canada anytime soon. Yes. Um, either for a human resource management or a business management, but it has to be management. Even though for the old um, cap that happened, I already got my admission for a business management. But because of the old mm. cap, now I'm thinking I should just, you know, switch to a master's, but I've not got my admission. Yeah. So I want to, and I came from Florence. So okay. I want to know okay. which, yes, please. So I want to, I, I, I'm, I'm going to speak with Florence on Tuesday. So that we can sit together and have discussion on this. But I need to know which one I want to go for. I don't know which one to go for. Out of either okay. business analyst, um, cyber security, or um, what's it called? The HR analyst. HR analyst. Okay. All right. I awesome. That's a that's a good one. And I'm happy you are one of the very few that are very conscious of the decision they want to make and able to ask questions. Yeah. To be able to answer this question properly. First, I would advise that you just choose one of those that you want to do and make a payment to secure the discount. Then when you're uploading your payment details, instead of selecting any one of those courses, just select that I need to speak with a professional. Yeah, those are one of the options. Yeah, so when you select okay. that, we will now invite you for a clarity session. So that clarity session is a one-on-one -on -one session we can take as long as possible with just you to understand your background, understand okay. where you lean more towards, yeah? And okay. by the time we have that conversation, you by yourself will tell, will be able to decide. So, and that goes for everyone on this call also. If you're able to Fantastic. secure a discount, we'll, we'll call you for that call. We have a one-on-one, -on -one, literal one-on-one -on -one session with you. This is, we have about over 50 people on this call, but that is a one-on-one -on -one session where you ask your questions, we drill down into your, your your experience and from there you can be able to now decide by yourself oh okay i think this is what i'm passionate about this is what i'll do with it this is something that aligns with my past and then you can use that to move forward that'll be that'll be fine then thank you uh, you're welcome so i don't know if anyone else has questions i'll be happy to take them before we call it tonight or call it a day, depending on where you are. All right, I guess that's it. Like I said, by the time this video goes live, the discount is off. So take advantage of it. If you need any, any questions in the next 48 hours before the video goes live, 
to secure your discount, please reach out to this email or reach out to these numbers there via WhatsApp, and they'll be happy to take your um, questions or answer any requests that you might have. Um, so I would say that I think um, so Dooms is asking, do you teach risk management? So if that aligns with um, anything data related, then yes, we do. But risk management as a program, no, we do not. You have no IT background, it doesn't really matter. K, Adebo, Ade, Adebo, Wale. You have no IT. There is there is someone on this um on my testimonial list, he's a lawyer. That's that's someone that has that has no IT background at all. A lawyer transitioning to become a business analyst. So your background doesn't really matter. Yeah. So we are we are very conscious of how we teach you, how we help you transition. Your background is is it's not, it's not even, it's not, a, it's not an issue, yeah? You, you could come from any background. We've seen people who, who, who don't build their own personal businesses all their life, and they decide to transition into tech. We're able to align that into, um, their, into, their, into whatever it is they decide to go, data analytics and all of that. How many days a week is it? The class is just Saturdays, yeah? The class is Saturdays and it happens Depending on the program you have, you can have a morning session or evening session. The morning session starts by 11 and the evening session starts by six. That's West African time, yeah? So depending on the program that you're, you're doing. So Saturdays, three hours, will you sit with your facilitator? It's going to share the screen like I have done here and show you stuff. You with your laptop also, you follow through or whatever it is doing. Then on Sunday, you get a video called Watch Me Do a Video. That video, you watch what you are expecting in the next class. At the same time, you're also getting a recording of, of, the sat of that Saturday's class, that one that you attended. Yeah, so you can watch both side by side, understand what you just learned in class for the past three hours, while you also keep yourself abreast of what's coming for the next class. Then during the week, the only thing that you also happen is you have dropping session, um, drop sessions where you, you ask questions based on what you have done on Friday. I'm sorry, at the last weekend on Saturday. And of course, you have mentorship sessions where we'll now talk about your CVs, your LinkedIn optimization, and all of that fun stuff that prepares you. So with all of that happening at the same time and your devotion to it, by the time, by three, four months, you are, you are, you are secured and prepared like someone who has been there for, for five, six years. Because those, those programs you are doing in class, they are, they are project-based. They are case studies you are handling. You are not just, you are not just jotting notes. You are handling real-life case, case scenarios. So I, I hope I'm able to answer your question and do some justice to it. Okay, Adibu, All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your response. All right, everyone. Um, it's nice having you here. Um, I hope you make that decision um, as quickly as possible. And you thank yourself in another six months that I'm happy I was here today. So it's my pleasure being here with you again. My name is Olawale Adeshino, and I hope to see you in class for March and take you on that journey with 10 analytics. So have a good night, have a good day, have a good evening, and God bless you. Cheers.